What finally sparked serious interest in the circumstances of Jimmy's death was America's Watergate scandal, beginning in 1971, which unmasked some of the highest officials in the land as vengeful petty criminals and ultimately brought the resignation of President Richard Nixon just in time to avoid impeachment. In Watergate's climactic year, 1974, it emerged that presidential paranoia had by no means been exclusive to Nixon. An article by Seymour M. Hirsch in the New York Times exposed a CIA domestic surveillance program codenamed MH Chaos, set up by Nixon's predecessor, Lyndon Johnson, but greatly expanded under him, Nixon, whose scale far exceeded that of the FBI's COINTELPRO. Operating totally outside the law, MH Chaos had spied on 7,200 organizations and individuals deemed to be a national security threat and compiled an index of 30,000 more as potentially subsur subversive. Among the obvious targets, such as the Black Panthers and anti-war protesters, were surprising choices like the Women's Liberation Movement and the Jewish Educational Organization B'nai B'rith. The agency went so far as to purchase a garbage disposal company so that it could retrieve material from suspects' waste bins without arousing suspicion. In 1979, the student newspaper at California's Santa Barbara University, a former stop-off for the Jimi Hendrix experience, used the Freedom of Information Act to gain access to whatever MH Chaos had on Jimmy. Back from the CIA came six typewritten pages heavily redacted in the continuing unspecified, unspecified interests of national security. When the student journalists requested more, they received a further seven with similarly blanked out sections. They were nonetheless able to find Jimmy's name still on the index of those who, if the, ever, if the government ever saw fit to declare a national emergency, would be rounded up and placed in detainment camps. According to his brother Leon Hendricks, he was listed as a public menace at the same level as Osama bin Laden after 9-11. Hence the enduring belief that what happened in this Samarkand hotel's basement bed sit was a political assassination. Nor can it be dismissed as mere conspiracy theorizing. When America's intelligence service ran amok, a young black man to whom millions of young white people listened to might easily have put himself in extreme jeopardy by playing the star-spangled banner with feedback. But from all the CIA whistleblowers who have since emerged, there's never been the slightest hint of such a plot. In an interview with the American author Harry Shapiro for Classic Rock Magazine, Rhodey Tappy Wright claimed to have received Hendrix's manager's Mike Jeffries drunken confession not long before Jeffries' own violent death in an airplane crash that he'd had Jimmy murdered. I had no bloody choice, he supposedly confided. It was either that or I'd be broke or dead. Supposedly he had borrowed 30 grand from the mob. The mob wanted 45 grand back. He didn't have the money. They killed Jimmy to try to get the two million insurance policy on him. But no, the insurance money doesn't go to the managers. It would go to the record company. As at so many other points in Jeffrey's career, there was an echo of the cult film Get Carter about Newcastle's gangland that ends with Michael Caine as Jack Carter pouring a bottle of whiskey down his victim's throat before clubbing him to death. It was like that scene in Get Carter. Right, the roadie told Shapiro. Some villains from up north they pour booze down the windpipe. He hadn't spoke up before, he said, for fear that something equally unpleasant might happen to him. Leon's share of all the money from the Hendrick estate was zilch. But hey, I'm cool with that, he insists, rather too frequently. Life's too short to bear malice. I'm a happy camper. He has always been certain that Jimmy's death was foul play. Music in the 60s was like the Wild West. Guns, briefcases full of cash, the mob. I've no doubt that my brother was murdered. I just want to know who did it. The usual suspects line up for their identity parade. Mike Jeffrey in revenge for Jimmy's defection, abandoning the Jimi Hendrix experience for the band of Gypsies, his other bands. The Mafia, because he belonged to them and was getting out of line. The FBI or CIA for playing the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock. Although no shred of evidence against any of them has ever emerged, Leon accepts the roadie Tappy Wright scenario of a contract killing. Bolstered by John Bannister, testimony that Jimmy drowned in wine. John Bannister was one of the guys who tried to save Jimmy and he was just, they said he was full of wine. He was, he was on his head too. It was all over him. He was covered in wine and inside him and outside. And the revelation of the American military's enhanced interrogation techniques during the Iraq war. I believe he didn't choke on this vomit, man. Like he says, said, been all, been said all these years. He was waterboarded. Waterboarded with red wine after maybe taking a couple sleeping pills.
Well, Jimmy's still in contact with his bro. Pretty cool. On Bluetooth to Jimmy's Wi-Fi. Sometimes when I'm on stage performing and get stuck at a cord, I'll ask him, what do I do now, Jimmy? And he always tells me, reach for it. Rest in peace, Jimmy. Thank you for the music. Stay creating. MF Doom, Jimmy. Music lasts forever. The art lasts forever. Yes, yes.